It's more about servicing or like your needs as a as an artist, the way you sort of like find yourself in the film, or is it like? Do you work with a blueprint and then it becomes manageable afterwards throughout the process and during the yeah. editing process? Like, like I'm trying to tap into your head yeah. specifically for this film. Right. Well, um, I, you know, I would love to tap into my own head and like know that there was some order to the saltless madness. I think the through lines of the create the creative process, especially when it comes to editing, have for me have been like. Mm, when I don't feel satisfied, keep going, but I pretty much never feel satisfied, so that's, <laughs> it really takes a big festival acceptance to get me to stop editing, <laughs> that pretty much is the only way, like, pre, like maybe four days before we got into Sundance, I was like, I'm just going to redo the whole film, it's just going to be voiceover, it's going to be like, Beast of Southern World, I give up, I'm like, I give up, I'm just going to put voiceover over the whole film, <laughs> so, I mean, it's really funny how you, uh, and I think, obviously, I think the film is much stronger, not with voiceover all over uh -huh, it, uh -huh. but, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's like tons of doubt, a lot of checking in with other people, seeing what's working for them. Also, I'm, I'm a really sensitive person. I care a lot about what other people think. But also when I get outside input, it really helps me. When I disagree, it's really helpful to feel it in my bones. Like, no, no, that's not what this needs to be. So um, it's interesting. So, so yeah, Harrison edited with me for about four and a half months. And then we, uh, he was, went on to Joe's Netflix show. We also had run out of money. And then um, I was like, okay, cool. I'm just gonna work on it for like three more weeks. We're gonna do things. I'm gonna hire my friend David, who helped me with my last film, you know, for just like a week. Okay, I'm just gonna work on it for like two more weeks. Okay, and then Athena Sangari saw it, and she was like, I think you need to push this, the character more. I think you need to deepen the character at the beginning. And I was like, okay, that's a great note. Okay, I'm just gonna work on this three more weeks. It was like three more weeks for eight months. Okay. And then finally, I was like, I'm going crazy trying to edit something that I wrote and directed. And I begged our producers to, to raise money for five more weeks of editing. And actually, one of our producers is an editor. So Liz and I uh -huh. edited the movie for another five weeks. This was in August. And then we were about to finish, and then she had to go fly to China for a kind of really unexpected family thing. And... Uh, and then I, I was still a week away from Walking Picture. You should not leave me alone a week away from Walking Picture. So then I called David again, my friend David, who lives in... Is it David Chile. Barker? David Barker, okay. yeah. And, and I flew him out. Uh, yeah, because we got some really good notes from people, including Michelle Satter and also Mike Mills. So it's just kind of like a fucking huge process where a lot of people give input, and I listen to it all, and I get really confused and overwhelmed, and then I cry, and then I remember what I really wanted to make, and then I try to come back to that. And you know, truthfully, I think the film really hinges around Madeline um, as a character, fully experiencing the dark and the light of her own imagination, and we as the audience, fully experiencing the dark and the light of her imagination. And I think when the film didn't feel like it was working was when it was too dark or too one thing. And also when we didn't go so fully into her imagination, I think I didn't like it quite as much. So I think we got as close as we could to the film that was in my brain. Although I also feel like this film, I feel a little bit the same way I felt about Better on the Latch, which is I could have edited it for three more years. Uh -huh. I don't know that it would ever be done, you know? So that's, that was really my editing experience. <laughs> well, from my, from my stance, I just get, I get a sense that there's a really assured decisive oh, good. Uh, 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 thinking process behind it and that the blueprint is forever boundless borderless um and and so like the if you were to merge artists with the actual everything that entails this film it's such a, a fun comparison point for a nerd like me <laughs> um one of the I, I, one of the strongest ideas in this film is the is the the worn out umbilical cord between Miranda July's character and uh, Helena Howard's uh, uh, daughter character, um, was the intent to make more of an overt statement about nature and nurture process between mother and adult daughter, or given the the, the film's title, is it is it was your way into it or your thinking process more about the the shaping of identity pertaining to being with the person that knows you best, who knows your own uh, history, or is it a mismatch of, uh, is a match of both of those uh, curriculums? Yeah, well, I definitely think, you know, we're all obviously formed from our parents and not just physically, um, but emotionally, mentally, you know, all of that. And I think I was really curious to work on something where 
um, like you, you kind of feel like, um, I remember what, uh, when I was sort of learning about horses, that they always said like, if there's a problem with the horse, there's a problem with the owner, you know? Okay. Um, and I, and it's, and it's a little, it's obviously this is very different, way more complicated, <laughs> but I think you're, you see that there's a very dysfunctional relationship between this mother and daughter and that they're. It's a codependence and um, a lot of pressure inside of that relationship to perform in certain ways or to be certain things, even if those things are actually not functional, you know, in other realms. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that I went into the film maybe asking some questions about nature and nurture, and I don't know that I, I found any answer. I think in a way what I found was actually a lot more compassion for all, all sides. I think it's really, really hard to be a parent. Um, as I really think it's really, really hard to be close to a parent who um, is controlling. Uh, and I think, so I think, like, develop, the film, making the film really helped me develop a lot of empathy for, um, actually for Miranda's character. Miranda, um, the mother character, whose name's Regina in the film, was supposed to be, like, the villain of the film. And yeah. actually, Miranda is so lovable and brought so much, like, openness and love to that that, in a way, she feels like kind of the tragic figure. Like, she's a little lost in her own desires for her daughter. And, um... I think inside of that lostness um, makes a lot of choices that are maybe not supporting her daughter's independence and happiness. Speaking um, uh, specifically about uh, shot selections and the framing of specific scenes to create a sort of like divide. I was thinking about the car scene specifically and how you shot that. It's sort of like off to the side and stu- uh, whatnot. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about the spatial settings and, and, and sort of like how you and Ashley came about uh, creating like um, a, a, a visual language mm-hmm. to sort of like discuss um, separation or, mm-hmm. or, or, uh, or divides between the characters. I after the fact, when we were pulling stills for the film, how rare it is to see um, the mother and daughter in the same frame, that they're always in separate frames, uh-huh. in almost entirely in the movie. And the only times they're in the same frame are actually when they're when they're really having a nice time together and otherwise they're very much separate and definitely that's it's sometimes it's funny because sometimes I feel like I make these very strong emotional choices almost very instinctually and intuitively and it's um, but we did we actually we did have a little bit of a concept around the mom which was to keep her like to kind of have her in a way visually a little bit more obscured and like uh, that sidelines like the daughter of it. doesn't want to see the mom and so that we don't see the mom that clearly and unless there's the moments when the daughter is trying to see the mom so that was the concept I mean and then in some ways actually film isn't exactly like that but mm-hmm. it was an idea of like the way that we thought about framing the way we especially the, specifically the way we thought about framing the mom was like what does Helen what does Madeline want to see what does she not want to see and being inside of her mind it's nice to see or not see the things that are um, mm-hmm. in in her Focus. I find it interesting the idea of female competitiveness. Here it's like it's almost like the Olympics. It's like a three-way thing. They're all going for gold, bronze, me- bronze medals. Yeah. I was wondering if you, if that's something that you, um, in the con- uh, conceptualization stage, if that was something that you that you also wanted to to to, to touch a, touch upon. Yeah, you know it's funny actually the competition between there. So the film, you know, it, yeah, follows. Um, uh, this young woman, Helen Howard, who plays Madeline, as like her mom and her theater director are sort of like competing for both her attention and her um, life force, maybe is the right word. Yeah. And uh, and it was interesting because that was definitely something I worked with a co-writer, Donna Di Novelli, who's awesome, and she's a she's done a lot of um, opera and plays, and she really came in at the end to help me. Um, work through a lot of the like okay how do I pull all this together and I loved working with her so much because she really like got it and wanted it to grow and succeed and she um and so I think it was with her that we really wanted to push the the encounters between Regina and Evangeline like really put the two mothers she was always like we got to put them in the same room we got to put them in the same room like more and I think some of the best scenes in the movie are really when they're in the same room because it's it's a very charged dynamic that's going on, um, and in a way, when they kind of fall in love with each other, and that threatens Madeline even more, you know, it's then like double, double trouble or whatever. So, um, yeah. So it, the, but but the, I think it's it wasn't necessarily originally about competition between the three of them. It was more about 
just um, but whose attention they are always vying for someone's attention. Yeah. I think each of these characters is really vying for one of these women's attention, and then, um, uh, and I think, and then the sad part is that the attention that comes is usually like a really not such a beautiful form of attention. Yeah. It's a it's a pretty skewed and um, maybe selfish attention that when when it is lavished on. Uh,